Hello, my name is Morgan Bowling. Today I'll be discussing the ecology of Kamiak Butte. Kamiak Butte is a state park in Whitman County of Washington State that is distinctly different than the surrounding landscape, making it a point of interest for ecologists and hike lovers alike. In this presentation, I will review Kamiak Butte as a whole and the different things that affect it and make Kamiak Butte different than the surrounding areas. This includes geological formations, climate, and biomes, as well as a review of the sites from the recent field trip and a look at the presence of black bill cocos on Kamiak Butte. The geology of Kamiak Butte differs from the surrounding areas because of millions of years of geological events that change the surrounding landscape. Kamiak Butte shows these effects from continental movement, flood basalts, and glaciation. Continental movement changed the geology of the Pacific Northwest. As seen in the image 50 million years ago when North America was part of Pangaea, Eastern Washington was waterfront property. This led to the formation of quartzite rock that covered the Pacific Northwest and is still present on Kamiak Butte. Basalt is a type of volcanic rock that covers much of the Columbian Basin from volcanic fissures. This occurred from 17 to 6 million years ago. At the time of the basalt floods, the Columbian Basin was covered in mountains, but miles of basalt covered these mountains, displacing the crust below. Kamiak Butte is not covered in basalt, however. It is the remnants of one of these mountains that was too tall to be completely covered by basalt. In the last ice age, glaciers covered most of Canada and down into the northern United States. As the planet started to warm, these glaciers would slowly melt and retreat, causing massive floods to cover the Pacific Northwest. Climate of Kamiak Butte is affected by air masses, the macroclimate, continentality, topography, and a rain shadow effect. On average, the temperature in the Palouse region is 18.4 degrees Celsius with an average rainfall of 571 millimeters a year. With dry summers, most of the precipitation occurs in the winter months. Kamiak Butte's climate is influenced by air masses that come from the north, east, and west. However, the climate remains mild due to the Rocky Mountains blocking the cold continental polar air from the north and the Cascade Mountains blocking the marine polar air from the west. Some of both of this air reaches the Palouse region and creates a climate that reflects both the continental and marine types. The Palouse region has a Copen classification of CSB, with more precipitation in the summer and much less in the colder winter months. This climate occurs in the middle and high latitudes with seasonal variations. CSB climates are also known as Mediterranean climate. The arrow shows where Kamiak Butte is on a map of North American climates. Continentality is the effect on climate depending on how far away from the location is from the ocean. The ocean greatly affects the temperature, winds, and rainfall a location gets, therefore playing a major determining factor on climate. When water evaporates from the ocean, it forms clouds which bring precipitation to nearby land. However, the farther inland the site is, the less precipitation as the rain or snow gets deposited before it reaches the inland site. Kamiak Butte's distance from the ocean explains the precipitation levels, as these clouds must cross the Cascade Mountains to reach it. Topography shows the altitude and terrain of a site on a map. It can also be used to explain the plant growth that occurs as the altitude, direction, and concaves in the landscape affect the temperature and water levels of the environment. The concaves hold tree species that need more water as gravity pulls the water into pools that these more water-reliant plants can live in. Rain shadows occur when a mountain or mountain range blocks rain and rain bringing winds from crossing the mountain range. The Palouse region is in the rain shadow of the Cascade Mountains, meaning that it does not get as much rain as the land to the west of the Cascades. This affects the amount of rainfall that occurs at Kamiak Butte, preventing plants that require large amounts of water from growing. Kamiak Butte itself causes a small rain shadow that partially explains the difference in plant diversity between the north and south facing sides. Kamiak Butte may be a part of the larger Palouse prairie biome. It also has two distinct biomes within it the north-facing aspect and the south-facing aspect, with the surrounding landscape with a biome that is heavily influenced by human activities, characterized by agricultural fields of wheat and lentils. The north-facing aspect gets less solar radiation, therefore retaining more moisture within the soil and can support more species of trees. Because of this, there is a heavy overstory holding mostly Douglas fir, ponderosa pine, and western larch. 
The middle story is made up of shrubs such as ocean spray and Pacific nine bark, and the lower story is covered in grasses like Idaho fescue and blue bunch wheatgrass, with some occurrences of other species like wood rose and spiria, along with many others. The high tree coverage provides habitat for small animals such as squirrel, mice, and other small mammals, as well as providing hiding and cover for deer and elk. Since there is higher moisture on the north-facing aspect, the rate of naturally occurring wildfires is much lower than that of the south-facing aspect, leading to less fire-adapted occurring plants. The south-facing aspect of Kamiak View gets higher radiation. This affects the plant species that can effectively survive there. The only tree species that effectively survive there is the ponderosa pine because of its ability to withstand high temperatures and low moisture content. This side of Kamiak Butte has plant species such as blue bunch wheatgrass and Idaho fescue, as well as other annual grasses that cover the ground. It also has shrubs such as serviceberry and bitter cherry that are browsed on by animals. Shrublands are prone to wildfires, which led to plants being adapted to fire due to lightning strikes that occur on hot summers. The landscape surrounding Kamiak Butte is characterized by anthropogenic influences in the form of agriculture. The combination of basalt cover and low soil provides fertile ground for crops such as lentils and wheat to grow. Because of this, much of the natural shoveling of the Palouse is gone and is replaced by agricultural fields. However, since Kamiak Butte does not have a basalt cover, it does not pose as good farming grounds, leading to its natural state. On Friday, September 27, 2019, a group of Washington State University students in a natural resource ecology course went to Kamiak Butte to evaluate two different sites. The first site was on the forested north aspect, and the second site was on the shrubland south aspect. While there, an analysis of both sites was completed consisting of identifying the species of the overstory and understory, estimating canopy cover, plant species dispersal, plant regeneration, and an estimated number of trees per acre. This site was forested and had two prevalent tree species. There were seven different trees in the site which had a radius of 6.2 meters. Six of those trees were Douglas fir, while one was a western larch. The calculated number of trees per acre was 496.84 Douglas fir and 82.8 western larch. The understory was much more diverse with different graminoid species, as well as shrubs such as Pacific nine bark, wood rose, ocean spray, and spiria. The ground was mostly covered in blue bunch wheatgrass and approximately 95% cover. And all over that, Pacific nine bark was most common middle story cover at 70% cover. The forest floor was covered in moss and grasses with close to no soil exposure. There was only one overstory species in this site, the ponderosa pine, with two trees in the entire site, giving the south-facing aspect 63.7 trees per acre. The understory was mostly dead plants, including various grasses, white spiria, and serviceberry. The various grasses accounted for 90% of the ground cover, with the rest of the site having no understory cover or exposed quartzite rock. The white spiria and serviceberry only covered small patches of the site, accounting for 7.5% cover for spiria and 5% cover for serviceberry. Due to its isolation, Kamiak Butte is also a good resting area for birds that have strayed from their path of migration. One of these migrating species is the elusive black-billed cuckoo. These birds are not typically found in the Pacific Northwest, even during migration. So it raises the question, why was one spotted at Kamiak Butte? Blue-billed cuckoos have long slender tails, long black bills, and a red ring around their eye. Their plumage is light brown on the back of the bird, with a white belly and white tips on the tail. Black-billed cuckoos have altricial young in clutches of 2 to 5 and live in dense forest habitats, more frequently in coniferous forest. This could be why they have been spotted at Kamiak Butte, as it is a dense coniferous forest habitat suitable for their needs. They have a diet comprised of large insects, mostly being caterpillars, in order to catch their prey Black-billed cuckoos often sit motionless in thick vegetation and ambush the caterpillar. Since caterpillars are the main food source for black-billed cuckoos, pesticides used to kill caterpillars that feed on crops have had a negative impact on the birds' populations. Black-billed cuckoos spend their winters in South America. However, they migrate to North America to breed in the spring and summer. Not much is known about their abundance or behavior in South America due to non-breeding seasons due to their elusive behavior. The breeding season habitat for these birds is the northeastern to midwest region of the United States of America, with the most northwest end of the range ending in southern Canada. The question is, how did these deceptive birds get spotted on Kamiak Butte, hundreds of miles away from their typical breeding range? Could it be one stray bird that happened to be spotted? 
or part of a bigger picture affecting the species as a whole. A warming climate could change their migration pattern, forcing these birds to travel further north to reach a region that could support them in the breeding season. An increase of 3 degrees Celsius could lead to a shift in the breeding range for black-billed cuckoos, the new breeding range being primarily in Canada rather than the United States. This shift could lead to more black-billed cuckoos in Kamiak Butte during the breeding season.